I, w I was having a time with a woman who just died a week and a half ago. Her name was Joy Dawson. She said, why the hesitation? And I said, well, you know, sometimes it's just very powerful. And God's there. I know it. And other times, and this was a mistake, I, I said, uh, well, Joy, you know what it's like. Sometimes he doesn't show up. And she looks at me and she says, honey, I don't know what that's like. Now we're going to have a little time where you're going to tell me about the times when God hasn't showed up. So when we finally had a time of sitting down in front of the hotel that day, in the shade, she said, uh, now tell me about the, one of the times when God didn't show up. I said, okay, Boise, Idaho. I was directing youth with a mission in Idaho and I was invited to speak at this church. It was the largest church in Idaho at that point. And, and, and I was in the middle of my message and I realized there was nothing happening. There was no presence, there was nothing. And I felt like saying to the congregation, you know he's not here. I know he's not here. Let's go home. She said, honey, that would have been the word of the Lord. You're wasting their time. See, this is the way a prophet speaks. All encouragement and kind. And I told, I told, I talked about another time he didn't show up. And yes, I, I, I did pray about it. She says, well, what, what did you speak on? Did you ask God? And I said, no. See, you know, her message was God's man, God's message, God's timing, God's place, all of it in order you ask God because this isn't about you. This is about him. And you're bringing his message. And, I, and, and for years I would struggle. You know, and then it changed one day. 1993. We had left, uh, resigned from our position in Idaho. It was after a very difficult season. Lots of things going on, including cancer with Linda and that. And, and, and I just, we just resigned and, and had the permission to do that. And uh, I was uh, starting to do a workshop called Plumline. And I, I, uh, I only had a couple places to go. Churches dropped us. It was amazing. It, it was just one of these great times. And, and, and I was invited to speak up in Alaska at a, at a church up there. And as I came in from the airport, the pastor who was driving me says, well, we just had a move of God this week, a revival. And I said, well, what kind of revival? He, I said, the kind that you say, you say, well, we got our speaker showing up on Tuesday night. It's going to be a revival. Or did you really have the real thing? He says, well, both. And he says, the reason I'm telling you is because the people that are going to be, you're going to be teaching this week in your workshop, they're probably going to be laughing at times and doing some kind of things, you know, that you know, and I thought, oh, great, you know, and I was very skeptical, very skeptical, but at the end of the time, and I'm cutting the story very short, um, the Lord spoke to me about one guy who didn't come forward for ministry, and I, and I thought, oh, figures, you know, and, and, and I felt like, you know, the Lord said, I want him to pray for you, and I said, Lord, he's only been a Christian for two weeks, you know, come on, is I want him to pray for you. And so I spoke it out to him. And, and he had been prayed for by this guy. The guy, by the way, name, by the way was, uh, that had been the revivalist that came in was the name of Rodney Howard Brown. So he leads me into this thing of, you know, I won't get into it. And th but finally, he, he just prays and lays his hand on me, and I felt nothing. Okay. However, the hand was laid on. Do you understand that? There are times in my life where there had been huge shifts in my life, and they come when a hand was laid on me. Two mornings later, I'm waking up in the pastor's basement, beautiful, beautifully finished basement, and, and, but it was 4.30 in the morning to a presence that was like nothing I'd ever felt before. And I knew it had to do with the laying on of hand. It was so thick. All I could do was get out of bed and fall on the floor. And the word that came to me in my mind is, how, Lord, how can I even describe this? And the word came, liquid love. I never heard the term before. Heard it a lot since. An entire hour of just being loved by the Father. Not asking me to do anything. I'm just rolling on the ground. God, this is good. This is good. And then lifted, and I, I'm not sure if I went back to sleep or not. But everything changed that day. I, I, I look back on it now. It's easy to look back and go, okay, this is what was happening to me back then. And the only way I can describe it is 
God was bringing me into a personal revival. There's revival where he breaks out. But there was a revival that happened inside of me personally. And everything changed where, where people would kind of, you know, oh, you're, oh, no, I mean, all of a sudden people would listen to me. I say it was that, that day Isaiah 61 came upon me. The spirit of the Lord God has come upon me because the Lord has, what, anointed me. And, and having a ministry and, and, and a workshop that was getting into people's lives would be able to go from, hello, how are you, to tell me about your dad, which is pretty deep. Yeah. All of a sudden, it was like people are weeping, whether it be on an airplane or in a workshop or in a classroom or wherever it would be. It, it made, didn't make any difference where it was. But everything changed. It was like all of a sudden people would come in and say, you know, what is it about you? I remember we were down in a parking lot down in, in southern Oregon, Grant, Grants Pass or one of those places, and, and uh, looking for Costco. I needed cheap gas. Whammers, you find cheap gas. No, no such thing today, you know. And, and, uh, and, and I found a guy, and I said, hey, where's Costco? You know, and Linda's mother was with us, and he goes, where are you from? I said, Salem. We were living in Salem at that point. And he goes, oh, I used to live in Salem. Let me tell you my story. And Linda said to her mom, come on, mom, let's go shopping. Because this was becoming very common. Men in so beside me on airplanes, old men weeping. Come on. Yes, come on. Why am I telling you this? Because there's only a couple of people in my life that know about this stuff and they're weeping because of the father heart. See, there was an anointing that came on and I was being changed. It, I, 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 lots of stories. I, I could keep you here way beyond the clock and into the afternoon, and I mean, you'd be listening to me because when God moves, it's powerful. And it didn't, it didn't mind if it was, it was, I remember 35 people praying in Mongolia, and every woman had been raped by a man except for one. And every guy had raped a woman except for one. I'm not exaggerating. And to be able to see God bring forgiveness and reconciliation into that group and at the end of the time, the women on one side of the men on the other and the men say, would you forgive us? And the women say, we forgive you and you are our brothers and we will trust you to be able to see a move of God take place. See, I could, I could, talk, I could talk about stories like that. But see, I'm talking about something that changes when an anointing comes on. And when we're talking about a great awakening that is about to come to the body of Christ, and indeed has already started, it's, a, it's, an, it's an anointing that comes whoo, out here. I love what Winky Prattney used to say to us, uh, is the revival happens when God just kind of shows up and he goes, excuse me. <laughs> See, this is, what we're, this is what we're doing right now, guys. We're, we are on the verge of something. Behold, I do something new. Will you not be aware of it? See, and it was glorious for at least 10 years. Miracles. I have stories and stories of incredible deliverances and he marriages healed and repentances and, 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 and reconciliation among families and so forth. But I noticed around 2010, it started to get a little less and a little less and a little less. And I couldn't, I, I, I got hit with a polymyalgia rheumatic of pain in every joint. I woke up one day and there it was. And I was an old man overnight. And, and I, I, everything started to shut down. I couldn't go overseas anymore. Then I was limited to the United States and I, I, I could come home tired and sore. And, and, and it was just one of those things of God just limiting, just shutting up. Behold, don't look to the former things. I had a great ministry. And yet God was saying, shut it down. You know the imitations you're getting? Say no. See, that's hard. When you make your money, a lot of it kind of coming in on those kind of things. And yet God said, shut it down. And I found on myself, 2020, January. Boy, I got there fast. Good. Where there was an anticipation on those that have been listening. Not everybody's been listening. But there was an anticipation on those that have been listening that God is doing something incredibly new. Yes, we've been in an inner healing movement. Yes, we've had Father Heart. Yes, we've had. See, all of these movements. But what's coming is going to be a combination of all of them. It's going to be incredible what's coming, and it's already starting. I've seen more physical healings in the last few weeks than I did in 45 years before. 
And I'm, I, and I'm not talking about a lot, but I didn't see anything before. See, and all of a sudden, God is doing it, and it's happening everywhere. And we get to be part of it. See, the, when the awakening comes, there's going to be a group that are going to be working in it that will already have been awakening. And are you getting awake yet? Are you listening to what the prophets are saying, or are you critical about the prophets? Are you absorbing what God is saying today? Every morning I'd get up and Linda would be listening to this or that and, 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 and I would say, yeah, I got that in the middle of the night. Because God is speaking to his people. Yes. Yes. 2006 or seven, I got a, I got a um, email from a young woman in Australia. She had been in a, one of our discipleship training schools down in California I spoke at and her her life was deeply changed from the week and she had just written a book and she said, Jerry, uh, I would like you to do a review for the book and I thought, oh yeah, a lot of my friends are writing books and so forth and I'll get to it and I kind of delayed on it and pretty soon, you know, a month later she says, have you read it yet? And I, oh, okay, okay, I'll get to it and so forth, that kind of a thing and ah, oh, shame on me, I know. So I read the manuscript quickly and, and, and there was a story of a young woman in her late 20s, house, housewife, mother, who just decided to seek God. And what do you know? God showed up. He said he's a rewarder of those who seek him. And, and uh, so I wrote a little thing. She thanked me and the book came out, sent me a copy of the book and, and so forth. And uh, about 20... 14, late 2014, some friends from Texas were visiting us. We lived down in Rollins. And uh, they were, this woman, a friend of ours, said, you know, there's a woman from Australia that has just written this incredible prophecy. And I said, well, what's her name? And she said, well, her name's Lana Vazer. I said, I know Lana Vazer. She goes, you know Lana Vazer? I said, yeah, I know Lana Vazer. I wrote a forward for a book. She says, you wrote a forward for a book? I said, yeah. And she talked about the word of the Lord, you know. And after the couple left, I, I went and Googled, you know, Lana. And, and, and I, no, I, I Facebooked her because we were friends on Facebook and we hadn't communicated much at all. And, 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 um, and I found out uh, uh, Lana was a public figure. <laughs> to this day, I mean, I just checked last week, she has 165,000 followers bringing the word of the Lord to the body of Christ around the world. I thought I'd encourage her and here she's already there. I looked at some of her former things and in 2014 she shared a dream. And she said, the dream I saw was, I saw the newspapers in America, she's in Australia, the day after the election in 2016 and the headline said, Trump triumphs. And I thought, wow, I started sharing that with a few of my YWAM friends, you know. Well, the day after the election in 2016, I got the headlines from the New York Times from one of my YWAM leader friends down in California, and you know what it said? Trump triumphs. What does God say through and through throughout the Bible? He said, I do not do anything until I tell my prophets. I release it to them first. And what I'm saying to you today, and I'm gonna get into this word seek, because at the beginning of 2020, I was at the end of it. I mean, I was, I, but a great anticipation. I'd shut down every single invitation, knowing something new was coming on God, please. And I said, Lord, what? In the beginning of January, I mean, the first week, he said, memorize Psalm 91. And by God into March, I realized why. He who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And you read that and you start saying, none of these things shall overtake you. Because he has set his love upon me, I will deliver him. I will honor him. I will lift him on high. I will be with him in trouble because he has known my name. I will deliver him. I will honor him. With a long life will I satisfy him. What beautiful words for such a time as right now. Yes, yes. But the second thing was seek my face. What does that look like to a person that's been in ministry for a long time? Seek my face. And all I know is that middle of the night, as an old guy, I'd wake up and 
have more than a quiet time. And I found myself on the floor like the Lord saying to me, Jerry, remember that day when you felt my love? What was your response? Boom. He says, I haven't changed. So I found myself on the floor. <laughs> now, for a guy that's in his early 70s, it's easy to get down. <laughs> but it's another thing to get up. But in that time, I'm listening. See, uh, come Pentecost on that uh, day, I knew something was happening on that, that year, 2020. Great anticipation. I know, God, you're doing something. I don't know what's coming. I know that something's coming. That evening, that night, I had two dreams. I've had four dreams in 45 years that I knew were God. The first dream, I saw Pastor Mike Perkinson was in the dream from, from Crossroads Church. And I knew Mike. We were friends. And I'd, Linda and I had worked a little bit with that church at times. And, and in, in, the, you know, in the dream, Mike was kind of at a, at a table, and he was serving leaders, you know. And he says, what do you have, Jerry? I said, I'll have a T-bone. Oh, no, a, a, a ribeye. You know, why not? And, and, and he said, okay. And he turns around, and he serves two other people. And then he turns around and walks off without serving me. And I woke up the next day. I said, Linda, I don't know what that's all about. Mike just walked away. Four o'clock that afternoon, I got a call from the lead pastor of the church, and they said, Mike Perkinson has received the word of the Lord to leave here and go down to Lake Elsinore, California. And we feel very strongly you are to pastor this church in the interim, waiting for the next person. I said, wow. Well, I told him about the dream. He said, well, it sounds like God to me. I said, well, I'll tell you what. God showed Mike, me, Mike, leaving. He didn't show me coming. <laughs> You know, I've never been a pastor. I've been a pastor, but not of churches. So you, bless you. Unless it's this church. This is amazing. <laughs> no, there's a lot of great churches, and I know that. I shouldn't even said that. God loves his body, and he just rebuked me the other morning, and I was repenting with Linda in front of me of being so critical of the body of Christ that it's not getting it. And he said, these people I died for. And it's changing my attitude because it hasn't been fun. A couple mornings later, I'm on my face, and I said, Lord, you've got to show me. In my mind comes 1 Peter chapter 5, and I open it up, shepherd the flock until the chief shepherd arrives. <sighs> Pretty clear. I, um, I just got to say, since the beginning of January 2020, this has been the most exciting season yes. of our lives, and we have had a good life. Um, I wrote this down so I'll just read it there's a need to hear the word of the Holy Spirit being spoken to us in these days the Lord is saying I want you to turn your soul heavenward And allow me to speak to your present moment. What is God saying to you right now? Right now, we live in Rollins, and I had a family of five that visited us. They came in, they're, they're, they're right now, you know, and they, 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 flew, they drove in from Lewiston, Idaho, uh, you know, coming through the, into, onto Big Arm, you know, through that pass, and uh, about 6.30 in the evening, and they said, hey, we just passed a little fire, about two football fields worth of burning. And I said, oh, that's interesting. They said, they said was there anybody there? No, you know, there was a highway patrolman there, but nothing happening. Hour and a half later, I'm looking in the sky, and there's this plume of smoke coming over. I wake up the next morning, and that little two football fields worth of fire is 4,000 acres, and by then last night, it was, what, 7,000 acres, and zero containment and heading north. Am I worried now? Honestly, within Linda's heart and my heart, there's this thing, I dare you to take my house out. <laughs> You're more into this than I am, so don't play the game. <laughs> I know. I'm not talking to God. I mean, if the enemy's, I'm God, when God's, God is good. 
But I'm telling you, it's not about what we own. That house does not own us. A year and a half ago, Linda said, it's all on the table, house and everything we own. These are times we need to get serious. I love being married to a person like that. You don't have to say, come on, come on. And sometimes she's saying to me, come on, a little bit further here. See, we're together in this. God is speaking to his church today, but what is the word of the Lord? Seek my face. What does that look like? I love what C.S. Lewis, uh, as he describes the Trinity. We sung about it this morning. It's, It's the greatest, most beautiful explanation of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that I have ever seen written. So listen to these words. It says it's a living, dynamic activity of love that has been going on in God forever and has created everything else. And that, by the way, is perhaps the most important difference between Christianity and all other religions, that in Christianity, God is not a static thing, not even a person, but a dynamic, pulsating activity. Don't you love those words? A pulsating activity. A life. Almost a kind of drama, Lewis says. Almost, if you will not think me irreverent, a kind of dance. Meditating on this, I, I, I just started writing words because the revelation was just so heavy on me as I saw this few years ago but but lately it's more on me as God is saying this is what I'm doing today I I wrote these words it's a continuous championing of one another the Father Son and Holy Spirit where each person's total joy is wrapped up in lifting up the other two while being empowered by the same selfless activity of the others total trust in each other's love which by its very nature is a seed bed for creativity and an ever-deepening love. It's a vibrant interaction that has gone on for all eternity. The Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, perfection in eternal community. These three are so for each other, in sync, moving in a oneness that produces a life-giving energy and limited, unlimited power beyond description. Where love takes on a life of its own, where that love energizes the circle with an unending building of power and strength and actually creating an unbearable light and indescribable multifaceted colors. This love, this goodness by its very nature is life Producing, It does not take, only freely gives, and in his giving leaves the recipient changed, stronger, and more like his self. The air you breathe in this circle is an inexpressible liquid love. It's divine perfection where creativity flourishes. And this is what I want you to listen to. Think about this. Out of that dance, emerged the dream. You and me. You and me. Think of this. Genesis 1.26. God said, let, there, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let me just read that again with just a couple more words. God, singular, said, let us, plural, make man in our image and after our likeness. What does John say about this? 17, he's quoting Jesus' great prayer in John in chapter 27 in the upper room. He's saying to the Father, I do not ask that these only, but only, I don't ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word that they may all be one just as you, Father, are in me and I in you that they also may be in us. Getting the picture? So that the world may believe that you have sent me, the glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them. 
you and me, that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you love me. Guys, this sounds to me like God's dream has been from the very beginning to bring us into the dance. You think you're going to get in on your own? Good luck. I and them and you and me incredible intimacy all of this because of the selfless sacrifice of the son of God anything less cheapens what he did David as he's thinking as he's pondering these words he says what is man that you're mindful of him the best theologies don't come out of bible colleges and seminaries and and in Bible studies and so forth. They come out of revivals where the nearness of God is there and people can see a little bit better. One of the guys I've been listening to in the last few years has been the the writings of John G. Lake. Some of you are very familiar with Lake. He he had an amazing ministry of healing and and, and physical healing and and just saw uh, miracles. I mean, everybody he prayed for at, at, from one point in his life to for so many years, everybody he prayed for, cancer, anything, were healed set up shop in Spokane, Washington. And, 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 and the Chamber of Commerce built itself as the healthiest city in the United States because of why? John G. Lake was there. See, it's been a pattern, I believe, for what God is bringing us into. You and me into. Yes. Are you aware of it? But he said this, talking about what I've just been talking about. He says, God's purpose in creation of mankind was to develop an association on his own plane. Can you imagine that? We better. Otherwise, God would have been internally living with babies and imbeciles. God has made us as near like himself as possible for God to make a being. He made you in his image, in his likeness. He made you at the same, cla- the same class of being that he is himself. Whew. This should blow our minds. John, 1 John chapter 3, he says, See what kind of love the Father has given unto us, that we should be called the children of God. And so we are. I, um, I'm there. <laughs> what does an awakening look like? Um, I, I looked at Azusa Street where the Pentecostal movement broke out down in Los Angeles in the early 1900s, very beginning of the century. And I just, just one little excerpt from it. Listen to this. There was an atmosphere of God that forebode anyone but a fool attempting to put himself forward without any real anointing. And such did not last long. The spirit from the throne controlled the meetings. Those were truly wonderful days. I often said I would rather live six months in that time than 50 years of ordinary life. Someone might be speaking. Suddenly the spirit would fall upon the congregation. God himself would give the altar call. Men would fall all over the house like slain in battle or rush for the altar in mass to seek God. The scene often resembled a forest of fallen trees. Such a scene cannot be imitated. I never saw an altar call given in those days. God himself would call them. And the preacher knew when to quit. When he spoke, we all obeyed. It seemed a fearful thing to hinder or grieve this spirit in those days. The whole place was steeped in prayer. God was in his holy temple. It was for man to keep quiet. The Shekinah glory rested rested there. In fact, some claim to have seen the glory by night over the building. I do not doubt it. I have stopped more than once within two blocks of the place and prayed for the strength before I dared go on. The presence of God was so strong. What's an awakening? God coming very near. Bill Johnson calls it an open heaven. Um, I got to close. Close. 
when you received Jesus, who do you think came in? I, I want to finish by telling this story. It's my favorite story in, in all my years. It's not my story. It's somebody else's. I was at a YWAM conference in 1988 in Manila, the Philippines. 2,000 Youth With Mission people were there, and some YWAMers from India brought this taxi cab driver who was, I guess, one of their disciples or whatever, but he had an amazing gift of praying healing on people. Most of the people he prayed for were healed. He had already raised three people from the dead. And he told one of those stories, and I'll never forget this story as long as I live. He says, I was driving through the village one day with my taxi cab, and I came across a funeral procession. They were carrying a dead woman. And Jesus spoke to me, and he said, I want you to raise her up in my name. He says, okay. So he says, I parked my taxi cab, and I got out and I stopped the funeral procession. <clears throat> then I walked over to where the woman was and I laid my hand on her and I commanded her to come back, but back in the name of Jesus. Yes. She rose. But then he told the story that is the most powerful. It's what the woman saw that she told later. She said she saw the whole thing taking place from the spirit realm. She saw the, her body being carried and, and so forth. Then she saw this car drive up and park. The door opened, and out of the car got the person of Jesus Christ. And Jesus walked over, and he stopped the procession. Then he laid his hand on me and commanded me to come back. When I opened up my eyes where Jesus was, it was this taxi cab driver. I don't know how many times during those several years when I, that anointing was so heavy on me. I would come back and I would say to Linda, man, I just knew I was just a taxi cab driver today or this week or this weekend because it wasn't me doing it. The miracles that took place, I can't do that kind of thing. We look back to this last season of inner healing. Even the Father heart of God or the charismatic renewal or the movement of faith, all of it was brought into the body of Christ to equip us all. And the enemy has wanted to do everything he could to, to, to belittle it and to bring us, instead of being able to champion and say, God, I want this, he, we become critics. And I've been guilty of that myself. But in this last year and a half, two and a half years, I've said, God, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? I want it all. I want everything that the faith movement has brought. I want to be able to have faith, and I know I have a certain amount of it, but I want more. I'm not happy with where I'm at. I want to be able to be able to say in the name of Jesus and see cancers healed. I want to be able to see bipolar healed without going through years and of, of counseling and, and the meds and so forth, because I have a history, not me personally, but it's been in my family, and believe me, I know how it tears people apart. God's going to do it. What we saw down here before I was introduced is just the beginning. I, I turned to Lynn and I said, it's heavy in here. It's heavy in here. It's what the word glory means in Hebrew. You know that. Most of you know that. Heavy. Heavy. Guys, I wish I could say, Lord, bring like a fog. I've just had pictures of a fog coming into a room. And the preaching ends. And we're immersed. It's coming, guys. Behold, I do a new thing. Will you not be aware of it? There's so many ways we could end this today. Those of you, and I know there's a hunger in here, I love coming to Hope Church. I don't know how many times I've come home after listening to Pastor Lance teach, and I say to Linda, that guy stole my notes. God's preparing you. Some of you, you just moved into the valley. It wasn't your idea. I'm telling you that right now. It was not your idea. 
I'm saluting at Keith and Mariska right now. God can't tell you how many times I've heard the Lord say as I've been thinking about this great awakening, God needs a place that is not just a church, but where the thousands can congregate. And I believe that readiness center is not just for YWAMers, but the lawns that you planted last year are going to be filled with hungry people saying, I want to know and I want to go to the nations. Your best days are ahead of you, dear friends. Guys, if you're in a place today like I'm describing, and you're saying, I, I'm with you, I know, I know I'm with you. I can look back on my life and I go, God has prepared me for such a time as this. And I am ready. Bring it on, God. Would you stand with me? I, I know there's a hunger in here. Before the, the service even started, I said, Linda, there's an energy in here. <laughs> there's an energy in here. If you're a person that's saying, I, I've, I've touched these things before, but I need a filling of the Holy Spirit. Pastor David talked about depression this last week. I had my own bout, and I knew it was a battle, and I knew it was the enemy. But we broke through. Individually, yeah. I didn't, you didn't even pray for me. Can you imagine that? But see, if you're saying, yes, I've touched these things, but I'm dry. I know there's something happening, and I'm not sure if God's disqualified me. There's some of you here today that are saying, this has happened in my life, and I know I'm disqualified because I've done this, or whatever. God's saying, that is a lie from the pit of hell. Yes. Some of you are saying, I need a filling of the Holy Spirit. I need a filling like I've never had before. Maybe some of you have never had a filling of the Holy Spirit. Today's a good day.